Today we have a 2010 KTM 65 that we're going to convert to electric. I bought this thing for $700. It came with a whole bunch of extra parts over here. Whole set of plastics, the Bold Pro Circuit exhaust that was on this bike. Everything that matters, like the brakes, the suspension, the wheels are all good on this bike. It's just everything needs tuned and cleaned and put back together. This is a 2010, so we have the four piston brake. So the rear brake is considerably stronger than the older generations. We do need wheel bearings in the front and in the rear, but it actually came with wheel bearings uh guys that i bought it from said he has no clue how many hours are on this thing but looking at this sprocket um i think a lot that sprocket is completely done we're not going to be using any of this stock chain sprocket setup anyway so it doesn't matter so honestly without further ado let's get disassembling and start taking out everything we don't need without further ado let's just start stripping off parts I think I'm just stupid, but I've taken out every single bolt and I cannot get this rear plastic piece off and the airbox thing. So I'm just gonna do that later. Let's get this motor out. Okay, the motor is basically out. I gotta get this clutch. This bolt is stripped, so I can't really take this whole clutch assembly off. So I'm just gonna start taking off these radiators and just pull the whole thing out with the lever and everything. So the bottom end and the top end is pretty much done on this. I mean, it's not locked up the bottom end, but I think I'm gonna put it back together and just see what offers I get for it blown up on Marketplace. If I can even get like a hundred bucks for it, I mean, it'd be net positive. But here's the rest of the bike. It's pretty much torn apart and I'm gonna keep tearing it apart and keep cleaning it up. So I got the entire motor out now. So I'm gonna take off this subframe and then deep clean this whole bike. So without further ado, let's clean this thing. Oh yeah. I also went ahead and took apart the whole subframe. I just had to pop the plastics off and I'm gonna clean this too and then put it back on the bike. So I got everything cleaned, got these plastics cleaned. I'm actually gonna pick out the plastics and put them on. Subframe isn't on, but honestly, this thing actually isn't that bad. So next, let's check the tires, see if they hold air. Now, let's see if these tires even hold air. I think this front one will, let's see. Seems pretty good, a solid. 13.9 psi that's not bad now let's check the rear which i think leaks the rear is completely flat but let's see if it holds air and so i got 19 psi in the rear and it seems like it's holding it fine so yeah i think the rear is good but wheel bearings is done on both wheels as you can see that wheel bearing is done and this one not as bad but yeah it's done but we did come with new bearings so that's not too bad so i went ahead and threw the rear subframe and the plastics back on i'm not going to put the airbox in because the controller is going to go in here i'm going to fit it probably right over here that's how my one friend has and that's how everybody does it i'm going to have to cut a part of this frame out but depending on what motor i'm going to get i'm in between fw11 or gts11 oh i thought about qs 165 but i think it's just way too big for this and i'm never going to use the full potential of it but probably gts11 probably will come up to here and then 32 amp battery that i have already i'm going to have to cut top of this frame out but like this whole little bit but that's not too bad 
Next, because this thing came with bearings, I'm gonna take these wheels off and do the bearings. And it actually came with brand new brake pads because these are gone, literally completely gone. Um, I don't think it has front brake pads though. So I'm just gonna run these for now, but I'm also gonna do the wheel bearings in the front. And also I'm gonna try to bleed this front brake, but I think it might just need pads because it has pressure, but the pads are so far gone that there's like nothing left. So yeah, we'll see. So I'm gonna do the front wheel first. I've never changed bearings before and I have a bearings kit here. I'm doing the front wheel because it's the worst and it's the easiest to get off. So I'm gonna just lock in and try to change them. Uh, so we got half the bearing out. It kind of exploded everywhere. So now I gotta get this other half out. So big update, we got the other bearing out. I mean, that one is pretty messed up, but this one, I already nicked up the rim pretty good, which I'm really not happy about, but the outside of the old bearing is still stuck in here. So I'm gonna warm up this outside and then pull it out. That's what I did on the other side and it came pretty cleanly out. I had to use the axle to like pound it out, but it came out. So yeah, I'm gonna heat it up and try to get it out. Holy crap, after half an hour of playing with it and absolutely doing everything, we got it out. But this is pretty molested, but it should be fine. So let's pop the bearings in, then continue building. Just pulled these out of the fridge. Ends up we only have one, two, three bearings and these two small ones go in the front, I believe. So, uh, yeah, we're missing one for the rear, but let's just do the front because it's worse than the rear. So about an hour later, it's back together. I literally accidentally hit the brake loader, rotor with the hammer. This thing was not going in. I was using so much force to get this axle in. I'm like, yeah, this is done. I was literally about to buy a new wheel. Bro, I don't have it tightened down yet, but it moves perfectly. Zero play either. Okay, so uh, we got a bit more stuff done to it. Um, kind of cleaned it up more, but now I'm trying to test fit the battery. 32 amp hot packs, AKA a Morg 32 amp 72 volt battery. We're gonna put it in this way into the bike. So wide wise, which is gonna fit better. It's gonna be a little wider, but not any wider than this thing was stock. But to fit it, we're gonna have to cut out these mounts and we're probably gonna cut out some of this frame up here. Thing is, like when it sits on this mount, I have a crap ton of room for a motor. My motor's only gonna go up to maybe here. So I can lower this battery down another like four inches, but I'm gonna cut out these mounts because I don't need them so I can get the battery lower. And then with that, probably only gonna have to end up cutting out a little bit of here, maybe this a little bit and maybe this bar. So yeah, let's see if it fits. And there we go, motor mounts are gone. I'm gonna keep these bottom ones cause I might make it mount with the motor i might use these or i might just buy a cradle i'm not too sure yet and just weld a motor cradle in here because gts 11 motor cradle is like 50 bucks and i could just mount the motor in there and then just weld this to here basically but i got these cut off i'm gonna go through and sand it a little bit make it nicer and then we're gonna test fit the battery okay got it smoothed out it's all smooth now it's still kind of jagged but it's not sharp sanded this down a little bit and now let's test fit this battery again okay big update so i cut that out i also bent this little bracket in to fit it just a bit better. And I threw some pieces of wood down here just to hold the battery up. So this is how I think I'm gonna run it. I could run it upright, but I'm gonna have to cut more of this top frame, which I wouldn't mind doing, but I mean, running it like this really isn't that wide. I mean, the stock radiators came out to about here, so not even much wider. And I'll have plenty of room for the motor and everything in here to get aligned correctly. So I think I'm gonna run it like this. I'm gonna run 72680 far driver controller right here in the airbox, probably right around here, like where the airbox used to be. I might have to cut this a little bit, maybe this mount just to fit it in here nicely. Also, I decided to open up the front brakes and there was like no fluid. So I added brake fluid, some dot three. I've been kind of pumping them, letting it bleed. Uh, it's kind of gaining pressure. I also need brake pads. I mean, it is kind of working. Gonna work on the brakes. Rear brakes are good, just need brake pads. You can see there's nothing left, so I'm gonna buy brake pads. These are meant for the two piston rear caliper, but this is a newer KTM, at least compared to the old, old ones. And this is a four piston, so those pads don't fit. Also to fit this, I'm basically gonna cut out the whole bottom end of this gas tank, basically this whole part, so that it will slide directly on. But as you can see, it's obviously hitting the battery right around here. So I'm gonna basically cut this whole chunk out. I might just cut it square so the battery slots in or I might just cut the whole thing down, but we'll see. So yeah, gas tank's gonna fit. Obviously it's not gonna hold anything, but yeah, that's gonna be cut. Everything will fit down and we should be good. So I went ahead and temporarily just ratchet strapped this into the frame just to see how it's gonna fit without the wood. And we're definitely gonna have enough for a big old motor. We might need to get some longer power cables cause mm, yeah. 
Probably gonna need to get some longer battery leads, but that's not too big of an issue. Also, I'm gonna cut out that little metal piece so it can get just a couple millimeters deeper into the frame. Anything helps. So I went ahead and measured how much of my tank I need to cut, and I'm already cutting it here. So I'm basically gonna cut out a square. I'm gonna try to keep it as much as the tank I can so it doesn't look really weird. So I'm gonna get back to you once I'm done cutting. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if it fits. Uh, not entirely, but it's hitting the ratchet strap right here. So I might have to just pop that out, but I think it will fit. Okay, the tank actually fits perfectly. I cut it a little uneven. I didn't need to do all that, but I mean, it's fully down, battery's in there. Battery will go up a smidge more, like maybe a quarter inch more up. So it's basically fully in there. So let's bolt down the seat and bolt on the plastics and see how it looks. Also, while I'm here, I'm gonna take out the latch for the air filter because obviously we don't need that anymore. And there we go. Okay, right now I'm currently trying to mock up um, battery mount. So I still have the wood in here and I took off the plastic so we can see it better. So I added this little piece of steel. It's not tacked in, it's just sitting here, but I'm thinking about tacking it in right here and right here because it's sitting perfectly in the battery. So battery will sit like that in this and it's actually pretty close up to the frame. So it'll sit in here nice. I want to be able to remove it, obviously. I don't need it to be like quick removal, but be able to take it out. For now, I think I'm about to tack in this piece. So let's see how it goes. Went ahead and got it tacked on some really crappy tacks, but I couldn't really get the paint sanded when the battery was in there. So now I'm gonna sand it and do some proper beads here, here, and down there. I mean, they ain't gonna be clean, but they'll be strong. So it's in there. I mean, they ain't clean welds, mainly because I couldn't get this paint sanded fully. So, and this paint is thick. It's not some thin little paint. So it was burning it off. And I mean, it's strong. I don't think it's gonna break. It should be perfectly fine. But so I did some test fitting. The battery actually fits pretty great. Um, sits in here. I do want to put a beam here, but then I got to connect it here and like make a whole mount. So up here, I think I'm just gonna put another L channel. So it's gonna sit diagonal and it'll just be like wedged in there. But to do that, I gotta take out this little bracket that I hammered in. So kind of regret hammering that in. I should have just cut it. So let's cut that out first. Okay, so we got the second mount tacked in, tack on this side and tack on the other side. Okay, so I fully welded up here. So it's fully attached up here and this thing ain't going nowhere. Also, I added just a few little beads right here at the end of this one and at the end of this one. I mean, this one doesn't really reach the battery, but so basically the battery won't slide out the end that stops it because it's such a tight fit so i'm gonna show you guys how nicely this battery goes in basically i'm going handle side first get the bottom lined up slot it into the top and it just goes right in and then you have to get this little lip upright there we go slots right in there and i mean it's not going anywhere i mean and it won't slot out this way but it will slide out this way so basically, that's all I'm gonna do for today. Um, currently, I'm gonna go order the motor, controller, sprocket, chain, brake pads, bearings, all the parts that I need. And you're gonna see that in part two. In part one, we got the whole bike stripped, cleaned, put mostly back together and restored partially. And we got the battery in super nicely. Next part you're gonna see is unboxing all the new parts and installing some of them, like the motor and controller. So really hope you guys enjoyed. Please subscribe for part two and bye.